بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأن أعلم استغفرك لما لا أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Continuing on in our study of Aqidat Wasatiya by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala We reach the portion of the trees where Shaykh al-Islam began to describe the hod and the sarat, the bridge and the various types of intercession that Ahl sunnah believes in and again Aqidat Wasatiya is a study of the aqidah, the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, what Ahlul Sunnah must believe from Iman and Iman in those, uh, from the pillars of Iman and the beginning with the general and then coming to the details. And again, we spent significant portion of our study uh, discussing the divine attributes and names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned in the Quran and as mentioned in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so we reach the portion where Shaykh al-Islam is speaking about the hod and qala Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah ta'ala there will be hod al-kalthar in the plane or on, uh, in the plane of resurrection and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will come to the his kalthar, his hod. And its water, the water in this uh, hod, it will be whiter than milk and sweeter than honey. And there will be cups at it as many, uh, as many in numbers as the, uh, as the stars in the sky. And its length can be covered in a month's journey. And so also its width. Whoever drinks from it once will never feel thirsty again. So these are the pleasures of Jannah. May Allah bless us with that. I mean, and the sarat, the sarat is laid across the the laid across the hellfire, and it is a bridge between paradise and hell. People will be able to cross it according to their deeds. So this is the importance. This emphasizes the importance for us to strive to have righteous deeds. Righteous, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us in this dunya, in this life, to see which of us what excels in the best of deeds. Who has the best of deeds? And this is what we have to strive to improve our deeds, improve the way we uh, deal with one another as human beings, the way we practice our iman, our iman billah, wa malaikati wa kutubi wa rasuli wa yawm al akhir. All of these aspects of iman. We have to put it in practice. So we have to have righteous deeds. And that is the way in which we practice our Iman. As Iman is comprised of speaking on our tongues. And the deeds that we do on our limbs. And what we contain in our heart. All of that is comprised, uh, makes up Iman. And so people will be uh, able to cross this Surat, this bridge which uh, is a bridge between paradise and the hellfire in accordance with their deeds some will cross it within the twinkling of an eye some will pass it like lightning some like a fast wind and others like a speeding horse and some like riding a camel and others will cross it running and some walking some will be dragged across it and some will just be picked up and thrown into the hellfire. There will be hooks on this bridge, which will pick up people according to their deeds. One who will cross this bridge will be admitted to paradise. And when they will cross it, they will be stopped at the point between hell and paradise. And some will have to, they will have their reprisals for the way they treated one another. They will get their revenge on this sarat, on this bridge. When they will become purged from it, then they will get permission to enter uh, paradise. The first person to get into the gates of paradise 
and the gates will be open will be the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he is the first from amongst the nations, and he is the first from the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. On the day of judgment, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will have the privilege of making three intercessions. So this is a shifa, and this is imperative for us to understand the shifa. And the first intercession will take place in the plane of resurrection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pronounce his judgments after this intercession. And the privilege to intercede will reach Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the prophets like Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, Ibrahim or Abraham alayhi salatu wa salam and, and Moses sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam, the, 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 uh, salatu wa salam, the son of Maryam. After they have expressed their inability to do so, the Prophet ﷺ will be allowed intercession. So this intercession is only through bi'idhnillah, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the conditions for intercessions that the person who intercedes has to have the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second intercession will take place regarding the people of paradise, that they should be allowed to enter paradise. Both these intercessions are the special privileges of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then the third type of intercession will be in relation to those who deserve to be cast into hell, meaning their deeds were so immense that they deserve to be thrown into the hellfire. This intercession will be made by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also by the other prophets alayhim afdal salatu wasallam and the pious uh, the the salihin. And th this intercession will be an appeal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he does not cast these people into the hellfire, the one who deserves it. And the ones who have already been cast into the hellfire will be taken out with this intercession. So meaning that these people deserve to taste some torment in the fire. And some will actually taste the torment in the fire, meaning they will be thrown into hellfire. But they will be taken out because of the intercession of these prophets alayhim after salatu wasalam that they will supplicate to Allah on their behalf say Allah please take so and so out of the hellfire uh, because they were one of the muahideen they were one of those people who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone meaning they were ahl tawheed so this shows us the importance of being the people of tawheed of being a Muslim a true Muslim on aqeedah aqeedah the aqeedah of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and this is the shifa, the people will be taken out of the hellfire, even though they deserve to be uh, in the, in, to taste the torment. So the one who deserves it, and the ones who have already been cast, are taken out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will take out many people from hell on account of his generosity and his mercy without any intercession. This is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. From the people of the world who would enter paradise, there would still remain enough space. For this, Allah will create more people and put them in paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. And all of this is a more ghaibiyah. This is things we can hardly fathom, but we know it from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu We know these things from the verses of the Quran. And the accounts about the hereafter, reward and punishment, paradise and hell, and the details about various other stages are mentioned in the heavenly books. And the chosen knowledge of the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, particularly the chosen knowledge of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the, this is all available in his sunnah. And this is just some of the things that will uh, take place on the day of judgment with regards to the shafa'ah, the intercession, and with regards to the sarat. And this is the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah believes in all of these things as it came in the Quran, as it came in the Sunnah. Unlike those groups who deny this, some of the groups who deny this, this type of Shafa'ah, this is denied by the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila because they are the wa the Wa'idin, uh, the Wa'idiyah. That they believe only in the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And their creed is that if you deserve to be in hell, you deserve to be in hell forever. So this is why the Khawarij, it's not in accordance with their creed to believe that people will receive shifa 
from the Prophet ﷺ, intercession from those Prophets and taken out of the hellfire, but rather the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila, they deny this. So they believe that people will, if you go to hell, you go to hell forever. You either go to Jannah forever or you go to hell forever. This is the creed of the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila, but this is not the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah who believes in the Shafa'a. As the Prophet وسلم, in his authentic sunnah has mentioned with uh, explicit details. And as Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in many ayats uh, in regards to the Day of Judgment and some of the things that we would encounter on this day. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala out of His divine grace and mercy bless us with forgiveness and bless us to be of those who have an easy time and crossing the Surat. And may Allah bless us all with Jannah to Fardos. And bless us with Ilm Nafi, Ruskin Tayyib, and Wa'amil and Mutakabilin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.